Hello dear students, how are you doing? I hope you are doing well. I'm also doing well. Uh, I'm glad that we are going to be together on this radio learning together. And therefore, welcome to the radio learning program, Ready to Learn, produced by Rwanda Education Board, with support from UNICEF Rwanda, in collaboration with Inspire, Educate and Empower Rwanda. I am Teacher Charles. I'm going to be with you for this lesson, which I hope you are going to enjoy. It is very interesting. I am encouraging you to get your notebooks, sit next to your radios. Most of the senior six students offering history. For all senior six students doing history, get your notebooks, sit next to your radio, and we run together. Thank you so much. All right, welcome. Let's begin our lesson. Our today's lesson is very interesting. It is about manifestations of neocolonialism in Africa. When we talk of manifestations, we mean the indicators. We mean the acts or the actions and facts. So we are going to be looking at manifestations of neocolonialism in Africa. Thank you so much. Last time, we talked about African nationalism. As we are talking about African nationalism, there is a lot that we discussed about even colonialism. Before the rise of African nationalism, when Africans agitated for their independence. With the end of colonialism, there came up neocolonialism, a child of colonialism. It came following colonialism. So today, we are going to be looking at those manifestations, at those indicators that represent colonialism in Africa. Therefore, I want you to define what neocolonialism is. Define the term neocolonialism. You have 30 seconds to define neocolonialism. All right, welcome back from that. I hope you are looking at it, you are defining it using the knowledge of colonialism that we talked about previously. So you can be able now to define neocolonialism. Uh, to summarize it for you, to help you out, to add on what you have summarized or what you have defined, neocolonialism means a process by which colonial countries continue to exploit their newly independent African countries through indirect domination. Neocolonialism is a process by which colonial countries continue to exploit their newly independent African countries through indirect domination. The domination can be economic, political, or social. Those are some of the spheres through which neocolonialism is manifested. I can give you another alternative definition. Neocolonialism can also be defined as a disguised form and efficient propagation of social, economic, and political activity by former colonial rulers aimed at reinforcing their presence in their former colonies. I hope with the two definitions you can be able to define what neocolonialism is. You can be able to discuss the manifestations of neocolonialism in Africa. Looking at the definition under the major things of political, social, economic, you can be able now to discuss the manifestations, the actions, or the facts, or the events that we see that are demonstrated in Africa that represent colonialism. Thank you so much with that background now. We are going to major it now discuss the manifestations, the indicators of neocolonialism in Africa. I hope you can now, given 20 seconds, think about the definitions that I have given you, the two definitions of neocolonialism. 
think about them, imagine they, they would be manifestations, what you see in the African continent that represents colonialism, that represents colonial powers in Africa under political, social, economic. So those are some of the things that we are going to look at. I beg you to listen attentively and take notes in your notebooks. Please make sure you summarize the given points in your notebooks as you are taking notes. All right. In a neo-colonial state, the former colonial masters ensure that the newly independent colonies remain dependent on them. The dependence and exploitation are usually carried out through indirect control of the resources of the newly independent states instead of direct control as it was the case in the colonial era. That is why many observers define neocolonialism as the control of less developed countries by developed countries through indirect means. You can get this one now. So looking at these definitions, let's come up with the manifestations. If we are saying it is the control of less developed countries by developed countries through indirect means. So we want to see those manifestations. All right, let's now discuss them one by one. We shall all have a point Develop it with explanation as you take notes of the major points. First manifestation or first indicator is dependence on foreign aid and external industrial investments. Dear students, do you see this in Africa? That African countries are depending on foreign aid and external industrial investments? Do we see our African states, our African countries, seeking for aid from their colonial masters? Do we see foreign masters investing in Africa? I hope the answer should be yes, because we see this. So let's develop this point. Dependence on foreign aid and external industrial investments. Developed countries did not completely leave Africa. They remained in this continent by giving donations, grants, and loans to their former colonies with high interest rates charged. You get that one. That African countries keep depending on their colonial masters by getting donations, grants, and loans in the form of aid. On, but they are, tasked, they are asked a higher interest rate to pay back those loans. Foreign firms have also continued to dominate the business sectors of African colonies. We have again seen very many foreign firms that are dominating African firms. They instead become metropolitan firms. Well, as farms in Africa become their subsidies. So the point is dependence on foreign aid and external industrial investments. That is one point, the manifestation number one. Let's now go to manifestation number two, what we see prevailing on Africa that demonstrates neocolonialism, that represents the colonial powers in Africa or on African continent. Next, collaboration with local elites. When we talk of elites, those are the land people, the people who are educated. So collaboration with local elites. Who collaborates with the other? It means that we have seen collaboration between African elites with the colonial powers. We have seen how they relate and collaborate together. And we want to see their collaboration, how it manifests neocolonialism in Africa. This is what we are going to see. I beg you to listen attentively for this explanation. Western neocolonialists have collaborated with local elites 
to perpetuate the exploitation of the people in Africa. To perpetuate is like to continue in the existence, to make things continue, continue as continue indefinitely, to perpetuate. So we see these things happening regularly and always. Most of the local collaborators are not committed to national interests and development, and their aim is to ensure the continued reproduction of foreign domination of the African economic space. We have seen this. We have seen our local elites, the land people, the land African, collaborating with European colonials. How do they collaborate? They do not have national interest at heart. They do not work for their countries. They instead disguise and work and foster the interests of the European colonials. That is a factor. Number two, that point manifests neocolonialism. We still see African people collaborating with European colonials to exploit African resources. That manifests or that demonstrates or that indicates the existence of neocolonialism in Africa. Had it not been this, if they are not collaborating, if they are resisting that they want genuine and mutual collaboration, that would not, wouldn't be a problem. But the issue here is them not having national interest at heart, they only work for the European colonials at the expense of their African people, hence making it a manifestation or an indicator of neocolonialism. Thank you so much. I hope you are getting it. Number one was dependence. Next point this that we have discussed about is collaboration with local elites. I want you in your own words to develop this point. Discuss about it. Put in your own words to develop this point. Don't only take all my explanation. Get them as useful, as important for you to get your own words and develop this point. You have only 20 seconds to work on it. All right. Thank you so much. I always want to encourage you that always with these points, understand them. Use your own understanding. Use your own words. Develop them in the context of what we are discussing about. If we are talking about manifestations and we talk about collaboration with local elites, see how you can develop it with your own words as long as it tells or it delivers the meaning of what we are discussing about. Thank you so much. Let's go to number three, the manifestation number three. It is called unfair trade terms. Unfair trade terms. Unfair trade terms. African countries are producers of cash crops such as coffee, cotton, sisal, and other cash crops which serve as raw materials in developed countries. When these cash crops are grown in Africa, they are sold, they are taken to European countries to serve as raw materials in their industries. And now we want to see how unfair trade terms comes in as an indicator of neocolonialism. When all these crops, all these materials are sent to European countries, they are manufactured into manufactured products or goods, then they are sold back to Africa. And when they are sold back to Africa, they are charged highly. They are priced highly compared to the materials that they took, compared to the raw materials that we sent to them. That comes as unfair trade terms. We sell them at cheaper prices and they sell back finished products to Africa at a higher price. That becomes unfair trade terms. And at some times, and more actually most of the times, these taxes, these prices are determined by these developed countries. And sometimes they are very low or unpredictable. You can get that point. We produce raw materials, send them to European countries. Then in the end, we import back the finished products out of the raw materials that we sent 
at a higher price compared to the price that we sold the raw materials. I hope you now understand how unfair trade terms comes in as an indicator of neocolonialism. All right, I hope you are getting it there. So we give raw materials at a lower price, we get finished products at a higher price. Next, influence of foreign currencies. When we talk of currencies, you understand what currencies mean. Like for example, we use Rwandan francs, it is a currency. Influence of foreign currencies. Foreign currencies like dollar, pound, euro, and Japanese yen are used to determine the strength and the value of African currencies. You can get that point. The dollars, the euros, the pounds, all that are used to determine the strength and value of African currencies. This means a fall in the value of these foreign currencies will automatically lead to a fall in the value of African currencies, hence leading to the devaluation of African currencies. When we talk of devaluation, I hope you understand it from your economics background. So with the currencies, African currencies are determined by the European currencies. When there is a fall in those foreign currencies, it will automatically lead to the fall of African currencies to deteriorate their value and their strength. So this is a manifestation that African currencies are determined basing on the strength and the value of foreign currencies. All right, let's go to the next indicator or the next manifestation, technological dependence. There are two words here, technology and dependence, meaning Africa depends technologically on European colonialists. With the evolution of new technologies, Africa is not at the same level as the European colonialists. Therefore, Africa depends on European colonialists. Let's discuss on this point in detail. African countries rely on developed countries' technology. They import, for example, tractors to improve on agriculture. And when these tractors break down, still African countries import the spare parts from developed countries. You get that. We import tractors, for example, for agriculture, which is good. But when those tractors get worn out, we import spare parts from these European countries. You can get this dependence on technology. It is not only on tractors. There are some other things. For example, the dependence applies to the importation of other machines as well. For example, the cars, television sets, laboratory equipment, chemicals, and medicine. All these, we import them because we assume their technology is advanced compared to African technologies. So we still, Africa still depends on colonial masters technologically. With the invasion of new technologies, Africa still import these new versions from their European powers, their colonial powers. So it is a point, it is a manifestation. We see it in Africa that we still import new technologies from colonial powers. Let's go to the next. The next indicator is military presence and intervention. Military presence and intervention. I hope you understand when we talk of military presence and intervention. Let's discuss about it. Most African countries have maintained close relations and cooperation with their former colonial masters in military issues. This is achieved through different forms of cooperation, such as training of local armies, purchasing military equipment, and even direct intervention. Yes, I wouldn't say collaboration is bad. It isn't bad. It's a good. It's good for countries to live together. But how do they collaborate? 
and how do they cooperate? Is there mutual collaboration? Is there genuine understanding and mutual understanding? We want to think about that one. So, but if there is imbalance, it becomes an indicator. And here we are seeing the, um, the military, do we have African armies intervening in colonial powers? No, we see them intervening in African affairs militarily through supplying military equipment. When we talk of military equipment, we mean oh, the weapons, the guns, the cars, all that, that help in military. So we've seen African countries depending on their colonial masters militarily. Next is use of foreign political ideologies and practices. Use of foreign political ideologies and practices. What do we mean when we talk of political ideologies and practices? Listen attentively. With this explanation, you are going to understand more about the foreign political ideologies and practices. African leaders have continued to embrace and apply in their countries political ideologies and practices of colonial countries, such as Western models of democracy, institutions, political parties, and procedures. African countries have continued to embrace their, to embrace their colonial masters' political ideologies and practices of democracy, that the democracy they embrace in their European countries, Africans should as well embrace that democracy. And it is different depending on the context, depending on the needs of a country. But they want African countries to embrace and practice, actually, and exercise they are models of democracy. You understand when I talk of those models of democracy. They want Africans to exercise and practice their institution, how they handle and how they run their institutions, their procedures, how they do things the same way they want African countries to do, which is contrary, which, is, which should be different. It shouldn't be the same. But if we find African countries doing the same, it is do copy and paste. What the colonial powers are doing, they want African countries to do the same. That manifests neocolonialism. They still influence Africa. I hope you're understanding that point. When we, let's continue. This contributes to political instability and crisis because of the internal conflicts created by these policies. Because these policies we are put on African societies, and the African societies, we are not ready for these European policies. Hence, they made Africans to violate, to, co to fight, so it rose into conflicts within the African states. Because they didn't understand, the they did not get the same meaning of these models. So you can see how these ideologies created many problems, or more problems, to the Africans. Hence, a manifestation or an indicator of neocolonialism in Africa. The last indicator that we are going to discuss today is about cultural degradation in Africa. That is the last indicator that we are discussing today. Cultural degradation in Africa. Neocolonialism promoted Western values in Africa. Neocolonialism promoted Western values in Africa, meaning Africa had her own values. But with the development of neocolonialism, new values, we are developed. We are put into African societies. Hence, Africans learned those values. And we want to see those values. Their impact on African society. That is when we shall understand. They are in, it is an indicator of neocolonialism. Western music, for example, languages, films, literature, games, and new religions. These came as a result of neocolonialism. They came to represent the colonial masters and to kill off the African values. The language, the music that Africans enjoyed was changed. We adopted Africa, adopted the Western styles, the Western culture, as we have seen. Hence, new practices and behavior. Of course, with these new values, they came with their own practice. 
that were different from African practices and behavior, especially among the young generation, such as violence, pornography, and prostitution that have destroyed African values. We have seen these ones as a result of the adoption of Western values that came replacing African values. All right, thank you so much. I want to do a quick recap for you to summarize all these points and we end our lesson. We only discussed about eight manifestations of neocolonialism in Africa. I hope with the questions that I will give you, you will get more points to add on the notes that you have taken. So I hope you noted them in your notebooks. You can start with this. Cultural degradation in Africa, number one. Use of foreign political ideologies and practices, number two. Number three, military presence and intervention. Number four, technological dependence. Next, influence of foreign currencies. Next, unfair trade terms. Next, collaboration with local elites. And lastly, dependence on foreign aid and external industrial investments. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you took notes down and you will add with these exercises that I'm giving you. Write them down in your notebooks and cut out research to expand and learn more. One, examine the consequences of neocolonialism on the African continent. Examine the consequences of neocolonialism on the African continent. When we talk of consequences, we mean the impact, the effects. So examine what the effects of neocolonialism on African continent. Second question, classify the given indicators of neocolonialism under political, economic, and social spheres in Africa. With the points given above and the ones that you are going to carry out research on, classify them, categorize them in two, three major points, under political, economic, and social, social spheres in Africa. Thank you so much. I encourage you to carry out a research on the two questions. Add notes in your notebooks where you put these notes. I hope you learned our today's lesson objective was by the end, you'll be able to discuss the manifestations or the indicators of neocolonialism in Africa. Thank you so much for listening in. Bye. It was Teacher Charles. I hope you learned something from this session. Bye. See you next time.